Maya, and Maya, and today me and Lama from period 3 are going to discuss genomic imprinting. Here are the things we are going to cover. Introduction of genomic imprinting, epigenetics, diseases associated with genomic imprinting. So to make genomic imprinting easier to understand, I'm going to start with an example. So let's say you're a little kid and it's your birthday. And you really wanted a new set of blocks for your birthday as a gift. So your mom gets you a new set of blocks and your dad also gets you a new set of blocks. But in some weird twist in gift giving, you are unable to open the set of blocks your dad gave you. Now let's replace the set of blocks with jeans. You usually get one copy of jeans from your mother and one copy from your father. The gift that is not opening is a gene that is silenced. Genomic imprinting is the phenomenon by which certain genes are expressed in a parent of origin specific manner. If the allele inherited from the father is imprinted, it is thereby silenced and only the allele from the mother is imprinted. As mentioned, most genes inherit one working copy from mother and one from father, but in some cases it's different. Imprinted genes inherit one working copy and it depends which one of the gene is epigenetically silenced, whether it's from the mother or from the father. However, improper imprinting can lead to two active copies or two inactive copies, which leads to development of abnormalities or cancer. Uniparental disomy is when a person receives two active copy of one chromosome or a part of chromosome from one parent and no copies from the other parent. However, bar body is when the female shuts off one of their X chromosomes during embryonic development and uh, there are two inactive X chromosomes and is sometimes referred to as a sex chromatin. If females genetically express both of their X chromosomes at once, then double the necessary genetic product would be produced. Genomic imprinting is a form of epigenetic inheritance where the regulation of a gene or chromosomal region is dependent on the sex of the transmitting parent. During gametogenesis, imprinted regions of DNA are differentially marked according to the sex of the parent, which results in parent-specific expression. By parent-specific expression, I mean that if the allele inherited from the father is imprinted, it is silenced, and only the allele from the mother is expressed. And if the allele from the mother is imprinted, then only the allele from the father is expressed. Now, to make this concept easier, they divided genomic imprinting into two parts for explanation. Maternally imprinted genes and paternally imprinted genes. Maternally imprinted genes are generally expressed only when inherited from the father because the mother's genes are imprinted or silenced. And paternally imprinted genes are generally expressed only when inherited from the mother because the father's genes are imprinted or silenced. Imprinting is a specific example of manipulation. Epigenetic regulation of the genome is a critical facet of development. Epigenetic control of gene expression allows heritable changes in gene expression without the need for alterations in DNA sequence. DNA methylation, which is the first epigenetic uh, mechanism to be associated with imprinting, is an epigenetic modification that is applied directly to a strand of DNA. There are certain disorders that are associated with genomic imprinting, and they are Angelman syndrome and prader willi syndrome, which occur in chromosome 15, beckwith weidman syndrome, which occurs in chromosome 11, Russell Silver syndrome, which occurs in chromosome 7, and Albright hereditary osteodystrophy, which occurs in chromosome 20. Prader, Willi, and Angelman are both disorders caused by uh, chromosome 15. Prader, Willi is when the father's copy or gene activity from the father is missing, which leads to the child having two maternal copies. This disorder leads to learning difficulties, compulsive eating, and short stature.
Musulman is the complete opposite. It's when the gene uh, activity from the mother uh, is missing or the mother's copy is missing, which leads to the child having two paternal copies, which leads to learning difficulties, speech problems, seizures, jerky movements, and unusually happy Beckwith Wiedemann syndrome is a syndrome that has to do with overgrowth. It is characterized by an increased risk of childhood cancer and certain congenital features. Its symptoms are uh, childhood behavior is weird, uh, macroglossia, which is large tongue, macrosomia, which is above average birth weight and height, midline abdominal wall defects, ear creases or ear pits, low blood sugar, hyptoblastoma, which is tumor of the liver. And the other disorder is Russell Silver. It's, uh, it involves poor growth. It's opposite of Beckwith. Uh, one side of the body appears to be larger than the other. Its symptoms are delayed bone age, kidney problems such as horseshoe kidney and uh, posterior urethral valves, and uh, the patient seems to have a large head, short height, short stubby finger. Albright hereditary osteodystrophy. People with this disorder usually are resistant to parathroid horm- hormone. This causes low levels of calcium in the bone and in the and in the blood. Low levels of calcium in the blood can cause to numbness, seizures, cataracts, which are cloudy lens in the eyes, dental issues and muscle twitches and hand and foot spasms. This disorder causes uh, abnormal joint morphology, abnormality of calcium phosphate metabolism, cafe or lead spots, which are birthmarks that have the color of tea and coffee, gynecomastia, which is the enlargement of a, of a man's breast. Hyperphosphatemia, which is abnormally elevated levels of phosphate in the blood. Hyperthyroidism, which is overactivity of the thyroid gland, resulting in a rapid heartbeat and an increased rate of metabolism. Obesity and precocious puberty, which is pubertal development at an earlier age than what is considered normal.